I'm not gonna ID myself. Okay. All right. Let's go. Wait, what are you doing? Let go. Put your hands behind your back. What happened? You that to yourself. Let's face it. In our world, some cops just don't think you're free to record in public. Cops, lawyers, and judges have a perverted view of American freedoms. You would struggle to find a better example of this than in the interaction with Philip Turner and the Fort Worth Police Department. Philip operates the Batusai channel and was recording outside the Fort Worth Police Department when he was approached and threatened by these two costumed clowns. You got your ID with you? You got any ID, sir? Do you have any ID? Yes, no, maybe. Do you have any ID, sir? I'm not being detained. For, for, for investigation. The only thing going on in this world, is, especially involving law enforcement, you're walking around a uh, law enforcement facility with a video camera, we like to know who's, who's surrounding our complexes. Do you have any ID or are, or are you refusing to ID yourself, sir? I'm not being detained. Yes, you are. For a crime. I didn't say you committed a crime, but I have the legal right to detain you for further investigation, depending on the outcome of what, what's going on. You're walking around a law enforcement facility very suspiciously with a video camera. In light of what's going on, we, we have the right and authority to know who's walking around our facilities. Okay, do you have your ID? Are you refusing to ID yourself? Yes or no? What happens if I don't ID myself? No, well, then... We'll cross that bridge when we come to it. Yes or no? Are you refusing to ID yourself or not? Are you or are you not going to identify yourself? Are you familiar with Texas Penal Code 38.02? Answer my question. I get to answer the questions here. It's my investigation, not yours. Officer Grindles here looks like he might be drinking on the job. In light of what's going on, we, we have the right and authority to know who's walking around our facilities. Yep, somebody needs to check this guy's water bottle. And I get to answer the questions here. It's my investigation, not yours. See, it's Officer Grindle's job to answer questions around these here parts. And the claim of, in light of what's going on, or in this day and age, doesn't trump constitutionally protected rights to press freedoms. I'm not going to myself. Okay, all right. Let's go. Wait, what are you Camera doing? Let go. Put your hands behind your back. What happens if you that to yourself? One of the outstanding characteristics of psychopaths is that they create a victim and then they blame the victim for his own victimization. At this point, the cop throws Philip in the back of the police car with the windows rolled up on a hot day saying, we're going to make you sweat because you didn't ID. Philip was banging on the windows to get their attention, but was ignored, and then he demanded to speak with a supervisor. Lieutenant Driver shows up and approaches both officers, and they seemingly ignore Turner. The three officers then roll down the windows of the patrol car and found Turner laying down in the back seat. Lieutenant Driver identifies himself as the commander and then asks Turner for his ID, to which Turner told the lieutenant that he didn't have to identify himself because he had not been lawfully arrested, and then he chose not to provide his identification. Driver responded, you're right. Driver walked away and talked with the officers, then returned to the patrol car and talked with Turner. Turner said, you guys need to let me go because I haven't done anything wrong. Driver again walked away from the car, talked on the phone, and spoke further with the officers. They returned to the car, took Turner out of the back seat, after which Lieutenant Driver lectured Turner, and then the officers finally released him and returned his camera to him. The district court reviewed the case and granted the officers immunity from prosecution on each civil rights violation. But then the Fifth Circuit looked at the lower court's ruling and examined further whether Americans have the right to film cops in public. This is an audio portion of those proceedings. If we have to accept as true these allegations, and I've got the amended complaint right here, I'd love it if you could tell me what paragraph in the complaint reflects that these officers were taking any investigative steps while he's sitting in their car. So just tell me in the complaint, what were the investigative steps they were taking while he's sitting in the car? All the complaint says is that he was detained for a brief period in the car while a supervisor who the complaint says was in the building next to them shut but up what, moments. What's the investigative purpose that the complaint alleges? Seeking identity, Your Honor. 
which Supreme Court case after Supreme Court case after Supreme Court case. Yeah, but you know, I'm sure you know, Texas law is not like Louisiana law. You cannot ask for an identity card under the Texas law after Texas v. Brown unless you can lawfully arrest them. That's different than... It's not a crime under Texas law, but absolutely as part of the investigation, you can seek identity. It's not a crime for the... But what's the crime justifying the detention? Like in all these traffic stop cases where we agonize about how long they can keep him in the car, they're getting a dog because they have reasonable suspicion of drugs. They're going to do a show up because they have reasonable suspicion of bank robbery. What in the allegation, only in the allegation, says that they were looking for what crime? They were seeking his identity, Your Honor, as part of... But that's not a crime under Texas law. What's the crime? Nor was he arrested. This is part of the detention, Your Honor, that is justified by reasonable suspicion. And contrary to what was being said numerous times in the complaint, it says that the officers approached, asked him, how's it going, and asked him to identify himself. Mr. Turner kept videotaping, and Officer Grinnells repeatedly kept asking Mr. Turner if he had the ID with him. They didn't walk up and detain him before he refused to identify himself. He doesn't have to identify himself under Texas law, correct? He doesn't have to in order for it not to be a crime. It's not... He doesn't have to in order for it not to be a crime. What kind of drugs are these people taking? The point is, there is no legitimate reason to approach an innocent man in the first place and compel him to give up his anonymity simply because some cop randomly asked for his papers. If the cops can do what the lawyer is suggesting, then they can walk up to anybody at any time and force them to ID and nobody is secure in their person. We're not in Nazi Germany. But the lawyer seems to want that to be the case. So what's That's a red the herring. crime they have suspicion to detain him for? It is a crime of perhaps terroristic activities, perhaps. perhaps. Where in his amended complaint does it suggest he was, they had, does, did, they, did they say to him, we think you're a terrorist? Yes, they said, we have concerns about what's going on outside of our That's facilities. That's not a crime. We have concerns. Right. And you don't have to, under the Terry standard, identify a specific crime. You just have to have a reasonable suspicion under the totality of the circumstances. That criminal activity is afoot. You have that to have criminal activity may be afoot. Right. And what, what you're saying that they had, the criminal activity they were investigating was terrorism. If, do you agree we have to accept his allegations are true for the dismissal? Yes. Okay. He said, they said, we're putting you in the car to make you sweat. This is what happens to people who don't give us ID. He said that. You're stuck with that at this stage. It's important to note that this Fifth Circuit judge and this lawyer are believing the testimony of Turner that the cop said, you won't give us your ID, we're going to make you sweat. In other words, we're going to punish you because you refuse to let us trample your rights. And yet this court said that these cops could get away with this tyrannical action and they have a safe space in qualified immunity. So even though this judge is making some good arguments on behalf of Freedom and Turner, he's a tyrant protecting hypocrite. How can that possibly, in the last 30 years, justify an arrest or even a detention to make you sweat? Again, on the even accepting that standard, um, it, it is not uh, relevant in qualified immunity law or Fourth Amendment law, the evil intentions or evil motive of the police officer. 30 so years even if ago, the Supreme something. Court said you can't detain for punitive purposes. Sounds like make you sweat is punitive. Has to be for investigative. Our court over and over again has said there's got to be an investigative purpose once you detain. Bank robbery, whatever. And, and if we accept, it may be provable later on, but he says they were doing it to make him sweat. So I have two answers to your question, Your Honor. One, under the Fourth Amendment, uh, and I cite a case, U.S. v. Goodwin, out of the Seventh Circuit, which cites a, numer a number of Supreme Court cases, Indianapolis v. Edmond, Florida v. J.L., Illinois v. Lidster, where they say, in, in essence, there's a sliding scale. If the crime uh, that's being concerned, that's act that the officers are concerned about, is significant enough, the level of suspicion can be lower. And in this case, I would love to recount the, the history uh, that I put forth in my brief, but I know you know it already, of what these officers were fe fearful of, including the 
events in the very days before this happened. That may be true, but we, we can't assume that. That's guessing. We, right, we have to take his allegations as true that the officers come up and say to him, you won't give us ID? Okay, May, you're going to make you sweat. No, what his complaint says is that when he refused to give ID repeatedly, the officer says, and he asked the officer, why are you detaining me? Or why are you arresting me? The officer says, we're not arresting you. We're not accusing you of a crime. We're simply detaining you to try to determine your identity. And under... Okay, that doesn't work for, for Terry in Tex under Texas law. They can't detain him to get his identity unless the only basis under Texas law you can get identity cards is if you have a lawful arrest. Let, let me try again on that one, Your Honor. We're not arresting him for failing to identify under a statute. That's not what's going on. Under you're not even admitting an arrest. Under Terry, I'm sorry, Just Your Honor. Just a detention. Correct, Your Honor. You said you're not arresting him. There never was. No, there was never an arrest. Nor was there an allegation that a crime had been committed for what failing to identify. What case in your best case there wasn't an arrest? What's, just give me a case anywhere close to these facts. He's not arrested. Other than the Sanders case that I submitted with my 28-J letter, Your Honor, the Heibel case, which analyzes the statute you're talking about. But Heibel is a stop and identify case. Yes, Your Honor. And the Supreme Court struck down. But, but we're confused. What's your best case just that you can put someone in a car, put up the windows, and keep them for any amount of time if the alley at a dismissal stage when no one says why? Um, in, <laughs> just give me your case that says that's not an arrest. One second. In United States versus Sharp, they stated that extending a detention in order to continue the purposes of the detention, especially in light of the fact that the suspect is refusing to cooperate, is causing the problem himself, they're not going to view that as a problem to extend the detention long enough to complete what was being sought there. And like the, Your Honor mentioned, bringing in a drug dog, bringing in a fingerprinting device has been held to be reasonable. Holding somebody long enough who won't identify himself to bring in a fingerprinting device. The drug held... dog because there's reasonable suspicion of narcotics activity. Yes. What's the reasonable suspicion of what here? Again, back to the reasonable suspicion is the reason they confronted him in the first place. There had been a call that he's outside of a police facility videotaping the security gate and, and cars entering and leaving police officers in their private vehicle. No different than the reasons we don't allow videotaping in this very building, Your Honor, is for security concerns that they well, had, in the building that they had, right. a, they had no one saying he could go into the police station and film. But if you're standing across the street in Lafayette Square, you're telling me we could you could be detained for filming our courthouse. If, if there is a gate through which the judges we have a front door, leave, we have a front door. You're saying if someone's across the street on the sidewalk, the police can reasonably stick him in a trooper car and put the windows up. If there is a security measure, that's what that's why states are passing uh, homeland uh, home, uh, homeland security statutes. Right, those are all time, place, and manner. Absolutely, right. the police could do that. Three hundred foot buffer. That they didn't say that. We don't have a, that going on here. They never asked the man, "Could you move on?" Three hundred foot buffers trump constitutional rights in the mind of this judge. But the reason those statutes are allowed is because the Fourth Amendment allows it. And what we're talking about here is the Fourth Amendment reasonableness of an officer conducting an investigation of, into something that he finds to be suspicious. To, com, combined with, the cases say, evasive conduct, evasive answers, failing to identify can all contribute to the reasonable suspicion of an officer. And so when they approach him, they probably had reasonable suspicion at that point. Certainly when he acted evasively, refused to identify himself. Evasively, the Supreme Court tells people don't walk away, don't run, say as little as possible and you can't get in trouble. What did he say that was evasive? He just said, he gave them the citation to the correct Texas law. He said, read your own law, 3801, I don't have to give you my identity. That's all he said. What's evasive about 30, that? 3801 is a red herring, Your Honor. They're this lawyer saying that citing 3802 as a red herring misleading piece of information is insane. I mean, why even make laws if lawyers and judges ignore and mock them when it's convenient for them? You absolutely cannot ID somebody unless you have probable cause that a crime has been committed, period. This isn't graduate level calculus, people. There is no 
allegation that he was being arrested. So in his allegation, what did he do that was evasive? Give me the paragraph in the complaint. He refused to cooperate with the investigation. He refused to identify himself. And if you have reasonable suspicion to detain somebody, you can continue that detention long enough to call in a fingerprint scanner. The law is clear that you can do that, Your Honor. They can detain, the police can detain Texans who stand on the law and they say, you just got to wait till we get a fingerprint scanner because you didn't answer the question that the law says you don't have to answer. That's absurd. The court ruled in light of the absence of controlling authority and the dearth of even persuasive authority, there was no clearly established First Amendment right to record the police at the time of Turner's activities. All three officers are entitled to qualified immunity on Turner's First Amendment claim. Yeah, never mind the First Amendment. And then the Fifth Circuit Court ruled, although the right was not clearly established at the time of Turner's activities, whether such a right exists and is protected by the First Amendment presents a separate and distinct question. Because the issue continues to arise in the qualified immunity context, we now proceed to determine it for the future. We conclude that First Amendment principles, controlling authority, and persuasive precedent demonstrate that a First Amendment right to record the police does exist subject only to reasonable time, place, and manner restrictions. Now, this is where the banter between the Fifth Circuit judge and the cop's lawyer gets interesting. Listen closely to what both the judge and the lawyer say and see if it squares with the First and Fourth Amendments. This banter is interesting because it highlights just how much disdain cops, lawyers, and judges, even judges who are speaking on your behalf, have toward First Amendment and Fourth Amendment freedoms. I want to hear your thoughts about this. Leave them in the comment section below. If you haven't done so already, subscribe to this channel, hit the bell notification icon, give it a thumbs up, share it with everybody you know. Don't forget to subscribe to my email list through my website, highimpactflix.com. If you want to support the channel further, the links are in the description or grab a hard hitting shirt or become a channel member. But more importantly, know what your rights are, stand in your rights and exercise your rights. If you don't exercise your rights, you're going to lose them. I'll see you in the next video.